So, so what what strategies have been tried to improve the outcome in rural responder? Um, the, the common the common response in an individual who doesn't make enough eggs per cycle is to increase the dose of medication. So people have tried very high dose of medication. Um, some patients may do better. Most do not. Um, in the initial studies on the use of FSH injections to stimulate egg, egg production in an IVF cycle, we know if we go from a one, we used to refer to it as ampules, one ampule a day to four ampules a day, or 75 units to 300, we'll see a dose response effect. But once you get above 300, we no longer see an increase in number of eggs. And there is evidence that using too high of a dose can have an adverse impact on the egg quality in that follicle. So people have tried using a low dose medication of Gnatro. And um, we tend to, tend to like a lower dose in our program. However, if you go too low, you're not gonna get more than one egg. You need enough medication to get multiple eggs. You just use too low of a dose, you'll just get your one egg. Because of the, the low response, people have tried natural cycle IVF, just going for that one egg. And you, you don't have an adverse effect of the high dose medication in that cycle, but you only have one egg. When we saw the studies of the low responders on one egg, one egg retrieve, the pregnancy rates are just lower because you have fewer embryos in culture. Uh, premenstrual estrogen has been used, and the reason we give estrogen before the period starts is to try to help synchronize the follicles that are developing. One of the effects of having an elevated FSH is FSH in the beginning of the cycle stimulates those early follicles to grow. And if that FSH is high, you can stimulate a lead follicle early. In the regular menstrual cycle, between menstrual day five and seven, you select the lead follicle. And so in IVF treatment, we start medication before cycle day five, because we want them all to grow, we want them all to develop at the same rate. And what happens in the patient whose FSH is spiking up really early, She's going to select out that dominant follicle quickly, and you'll end up with just one dominant follicle. So if you start estrogen before the period, you can push down the FSH, and you have a lesser chance of that happening. So that's premenstrual estrogen. And premenstrual GnRH antagonist, the anorel septicide, is purposes to do the same thing, to shut down that premenstrual rise in FSH. Um, androgens, DHEA, testosterone have both been tried, um, and there are reports that they can increase egg production in lower responders. Small number of studies, not proven. Um, everyone tries it occasionally, um, but there's no definitive proof of that impact. And growth hormones have been very popular recently. Um, there's studies, actually a growing number of studies showing growth hormone may improve egg quality and pregnancy rates in IVF, but it doesn't improve quantity of eggs. So the verdict is still out, but it actually looks interestingly and potentially positive on egg quality, under quality, and pregnancy rates. So, so what, it, what is the conclusion on all these different strategies? Studies on the management of the predicted or observed poor responders have not delivered, delivered solid evidence for a preferred strategy. So despite all the attempts, all the different strategies, no one has found the perfect profile. And I hear from patients every day, they, want, they ask, well, what's the latest new protocol for a low responder? And there's no consensus out there. No one has found any strategy um, that influences outcome. Um, so it's frustrating. Um, so in our, my experience, one thing that we know from treating patients with decreased ovarian reserves is it requires very careful monitoring. If you give too much medication for too long, you can decrease the quality of the eggs and the follicles. And you really have to treat the ovaries of an individual with decreased ovarian reserve very gently. You can't give too much. You can't push the eggs too hard. And you have to do all that you can to tease those follicles out. Um, 
I think what we need to learn, we need to learn how to um, have a better understanding of what causes these follicles to become activated and become um, growing along that tra trajectory of be becoming FSH dependent. How do we get those inactive follicles to become activated and recruited in each cycle? And I think we need to find out in that, that individual who's losing follicles more rapidly, how do we slow down that loss? Um, and in the bigger picture, we need to identify in women at a younger age, which women are at increased risk for losing their follicles early. Because right now we don't know how to do that. And I think in the future with increased understanding of the genetics of decreased ovarian reserve, we'll better be able to identify those individuals and offer them treatment early. Either you may decide to have their family at an earlier age or perhaps freeze their eggs to store for later. Uh, I think that would be useful information we can identify those individuals. Last thing, what I want to really uh, teach you about is uh, is really when the last the last cohort, the last strategy if you look at is is a studies on the management of the predicted or observed poor responder have not delivered so have this for preferred strategy. Here's the thing about strategies is that it's not one thing that's going to help. It's not like you take a magic bullet pill and that's going to help. It's a combination of multiple strategies that's going to help you the best. And it's very difficult to do research with a combination of variables, if not impossible. Okay? So the key here is to do several things together. Looking at your sleep, looking at your travel, looking at your stress level, looking at your nutrition, uh, looking at your exercise. All those things can make an impact. Don't, understand, uh, don't underestimate what kind of impact you can make. You can make impact by looking at that. Okay. And the last thing that I, besides this, is to look at meditation. <clears throat> you might ask, how do I get my FSH and the estrogen balanced? One part of it is through all those things that I talked about. The other part of it is actually being quiet being quiet. Quietness, finding a time, finding a room where you can relax and really quiet down for a moment, actually resets not just your nervous system, it can actually help you to reset your hormone balance.